Hello and welcome to the first episode in our Advanced Water Rocket tutorial series. In this series, you will learn multiple ways to construct reinforced high-power water rockets. The plan is to share with you what we have learned over more than a decade of building various composite laminate water rockets and setting multiple water rocket altitude records dating back to 2004. This series will cover building techniques for all of the components needed to fly high-powered water rockets, and sometimes even multiple techniques for doing the same thing so that you can choose the techniques that are most suitable for your skill set, experience, and budget. You can navigate to the other parts of this series as we release them using the links provided in the annotations or in the description below. Are you ready? Let's get started. High power water rockets get their name from the high air pressure that they use to fly higher and the only way to increase the pressure without exploding the rocket is to make the rocket from reinforced materials. There are a virtually unlimited number of ways to do this, but this series will focus on building rockets which comply with the rules of sanctioned water rocket competitions since our experience has been concentrated in this area. If you're not planning on entering any competitions, then feel free to experiment with whatever radical designs that interest you. Just please be extra careful because these restrictions are in place in competition rules for safety reasons. The focus of this first video in the series is the pressure vessel, which usually doubles as the fuselage and holds the water and air propellants under high pressure. It must be as light and as strong as possible to maximize the performance of the rocket. There are several ways to fabricate this critical part of the rocket and you must first decide on the fabrication technique that best suits your application. Of the materials commonly available, composite laminates have the highest strength to weight ratio, so this material is the material of choice for high power water rockets. Composites are a woven fabric material comprised of high strength fibers. Pieces of these fabrics are then layered together and held in place by a two-part epoxy or polyester resin. The resin is mixed together as a liquid and it hardens fusing the laminate together. There are many composites to choose from. Fiberglass, carbon fiber, and Kevlar, just to name a few. Each comes in multiple thicknesses or weights. Composites also come in different forms, such as fabric rolls or in a continuously braided tube or sleeve. It even comes with different weave patterns to maximize the ability to conform it to different shapes without wrinkling. It is a very good idea to get a small sample of different materials and test them before deciding which one to use. You can even build small sections of your pressure vessel and test them to failure to see which performs the best. In general, you will not need any special tools. You will need standard hand tools like scissors, files, saws, and sandpaper. A good plastic container to mix the resins and a sturdy mixing stick is also required. Paint brushes are needed to apply the resin and also have plenty of paper towels and rags on hand. Composite fibers and dust and the resins are nasty chemicals, so always have gloves and eye protection and a respirator or face mask is recommended when working with them. You should also protect your work area with newspapers or a plastic drop cloth. If you do a lot of work with composites, you may wish to make a sheet metal covered workbench like ours. The metal top can be easily cleaned after each project. It also makes a nice surface for wetting out the fabric. Foam packing materials can be cut into small sections for use as resin applicators and they work just as good as any brush that you can buy. You can also make resin spreaders and squeegees from cut up soft drink bottles. Before you start laminating your rocket, you will need to make some spacers to raise the rocket off the table while the resin is curing. We like to cut up small sections of integrated circuit storage tubes and use them as spacers to keep the wet resin from touching the table. There are two common construction methods. The first is called the core laminate process. For this method, a hollow airtight core is built in the shape of the pressure vessel, and then reinforcing fabric and resin are applied over the core, giving it strength and rigidity. This is similar to the way that carbon fiber pressure tanks are made. 
Airtight containers in the shape suited for a water rocket fuselage are not common, so you will probably have to fabricate your own core. One way to do this is to simply use a spliced bottle water rocket as the core. To make a core from spliced bottles, they must be cut and glued together until the desired length is achieved. We have produced a very simple tutorial that shows the correct way to splice bottles and we have linked to it in this video's description. It's a good idea to pressure test the splice joints every few feet as you build the core to ensure there are no leaks. Once the laminate is applied, there's no way to fix a leak, so test the core and retest the core, then apply the reinforcement. Be aware that if you use a core made from bottles and you leave the cap at the top exposed, there is a good chance the cap will fail and burst under high pressure. It is a good idea to make a plug for the neck and bottle mouth. An easy way to do this is to mix up some epoxy resin and lighten it by adding glass bead fillet powder. Then pour this mixture into the neck and allow it to cure. Once you have completed and tested the core, applying the reinforcement fabric is reasonably simple. Take your fabric and cover the core completely, then smooth out any wrinkles. When you have the fabric applied to your liking, you can then mix your resin. Measure out the correct ratio of each liquid and stir them until it is completely mixed. Spread the resin liberally over the fabric until it is completely saturated, then use a squeegee or stick to remove the excess resin. Start at the middle and then work towards each end, smoothing out the fabric and making it neat as you go. When you get to the end of the rocket, you should tie off the fabric ends to hold them in place. Cable ties work great for this. Now, you can use paper towels or a rag to soak up any excess resin, then follow the directions for curing the resin. After curing, you can carefully trim off the excess fabric on the ends and your pressure vessel is complete. The second method is called the mandrel laminate process. For this construction, a straight or slightly tapered cylinder in the shape of the rocket is made. This is called the mandrel. It is then coated with a wax or a mold release agent to keep the resin from sticking to it. Fabric and resin are then applied to the mandrel in the same way as described in the core laminate process, except that one or both ends of the mandrel are left unlaminated. Once the resin has cured, the mandrel is carefully removed and what remains is a perfectly formed tube of composite material. The ends of the tube are cleaned and made straight by sawing off the uneven ends and sanding them as necessary. The pressure vessel is completed with the addition of a nozzle and end cap, which are glued into the open ends of the tube. Making your own nozzles and end caps is trivial if you plan ahead when picking the mandrel size. The trick is to pick a mandrel so that it is the same diameter as common PVC pipe fittings. You can then easily fabricate the rocket ends with simple hand tools by cutting and combining bits of PVC pipe and fittings to achieve the desired shapes and gluing them into place. If you have access to a lathe, then you can cut custom pieces of any size or shape. This will allow you to build more elaborate nozzle shapes, such as this carbon boat tail, which we designed for improved aerodynamics. Avoid the temptation to use metal end caps or nozzles. The extra weight will impair the performance and the metal parts represent a safety violation that will prevent your rocket from entering most competitions. A favorite type of core laminate rocket core we use employs polycarbonate fluorescent light tube covers, or FTCs, as the core. FTC tubes come in numerous sizes, but they are all increasingly hard to find in recent years. One of the reasons we like the T12 size FTC tube is because Schedule 40 1-inch PVC pipe fittings are nearly a perfect fit inside the FTC tube. 
We make nozzles and end caps for the hollow FTC tubes and then glue them in place similar to the way that the end caps are installed in the mandrel laminate rocket. Another very popular way to make end caps and nozzles for your FTC rockets is to cut the necks off of soft drink bottles and then glue them in place. The FTC tube is now a core that can be laminated just like any other core laminate rocket. We typically don't build in this way, but for a mandrel laminate design, a short mandrel can be used to make multiple tubular sections that can be glued together later, forming a longer tube. But the risk of catastrophic failure of the rocket is increased with each additional joint. For a core laminate design, to help simplify construction, some people prefer to make multiple small cores, then test and laminate them individually. Then finally, they use threaded couplers called tornado tubes to join them together later. Be aware that the extra weight of each joint can add significantly to the overall weight of the rocket, negatively impacting the performance. To ensure maximum resin penetration and adhesion to the rocket, some people prefer to pre-soak their fabric in resin prior to applying it to the core or mandrel. To pre-soak the fabric with resin, you should lay it out on a flat surface covered in a plastic drop cloth, or make a metal covered laminating table like ours. Spread the resin on the fabric and allow it to soak in, then apply the soaked fabric to the rocket. It can be hard working with large resin soaked pieces of fabric, but the end result may be worth it to you. Before you go much further, you should pressure test the rocket at this point for leaks or total failures. Always take extreme safety measures when testing, because a reinforced rocket holds significantly more energy than a plain water rocket and will explode much more violently. When you're satisfied with the pressure testing, the last step in building the pressure vessel is to sand it smooth and then optionally paint it. We like the carbon fiber look, so we clear coat our rockets. But if you live where it is very warm, you should paint your rocket a light color to avoid solar heating, which can weaken the rocket. When this is complete, you are done with the pressure vessel and you're ready for the next installment in this series. In the upcoming videos, we're going to show you several ways to make fins, multiple methods for making nose cones, different servo motor activated recovery systems, and also onboard camera systems all for your high-powered water rocket. We hope that these videos give you some ideas and inspiration for building a high-power water rocket of your own. Leave a comment and tell us how this works for you, or if you want, you can leave us some questions or feedback. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video, and give us a like if you learned something or at least enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.